Welcome to a tutorial video on hooks, uh, part of a new functionality for Twine 2.0. So to start this video, I'm actually going to run through a story I've called hooks. Let's show you this functionality in action before we start looking at the code. So we're getting here with the start passage and we see a link, a spooky room. We click on the link and it sends us to another passage, this passage, spooky room. So in this passage we see our condition is great. That's good. And we see another spooky room. So we click on another spooky room. Our condition is now good. And I see a lantern and I see a teapot. So I click on lantern. Oh, I picked up the lantern and the link to lantern disappeared. Uh, I click on teapot. Oh, and I picked up a teapot and the link to teapot disappeared. Click on next area and I have a lantern and I have a teapot. That's pretty exciting. What if we go back to the previous passage? What if this time I only click on teapot and go to the next area? I have a teapot. And if I only click on lantern, I only have a lantern. And if I click on neither of them, well, I have nothing. Okay. So what does this look like in code? Well, to start, I have a passage called the beginning, which I've tagged to be the start passage. And to begin, I'm using the set assignment macro to set the variable condition to the string good. And then I have a link to the passage a spooky room. So in a spooky room, I have value macro if checking if the variable condition is the string good. If it is, run whatever's in the brackets. Show the sentence, your condition is great. Then run the assignment macro set to set the variable condition to good. At this point though, you may be asking yourself, I've used macros in the past. I know what they look like. What does this have to do with hooks? Well, all of this in fact is a hook. In Twine 2.0, the word hook just means some selection of text, some span of text is special in some way. A hook is actually this, what's in the brackets, combined with this, something before it. In this case, this whole thing is an anonymous hook. It doesn't have a name, so it's anonymous. When using the macro if, we're associated with the brackets. So, if this is true, do something in brackets. Well, okay, well, what's happening here? You may ask. And here, we're setting the variable condition check to condition is good. Condition is good may look pretty similar in fact, to what's right here. Condition is great. In this case, we're using the macro if. If condition is great, do something. Here, we're setting the outcome of condition is good to be the value of the variable condition check. So if condition is good, condition check will be true. If condition is not good, the string is, if the variable condition is not the string good, condition check will be false. And then finally, in this passage, we have a link to another passage, another spooky room. Well, as we saw in the previous passage, we had an anonymous hook. We were using some macro, and then we had something in brackets. Right here, in the selection, we have a named hook. We have some name, condition check, and then we have something in brackets. Remember, in the previous passage, we were setting condition check to be if condition was good, or if condition was not good. Since condition is good as set in the previous passage, then this 
will run. The sentence, your condition is good, will be shown. Named hooks run whatever is associated with their brackets if and only if they are true. So it's something to keep in, to keep in memory here, to remember. Named hooks work when they are true. So condition check is true, and whatever's in brackets gets run or shown. So the other thing you can do with hooks is combine them with name tags. Name tags are brand new to Twine 2.0, and they look a lot like variables, except instead of using the dollar sign, they use the bar. And the bar either goes in the front of it, if it's on the left-hand side, or the back of it if it's on the right hand side. So what do I what do I mean by that? I mean like what does that mean here? Well a name tag always points towards whatever it is associated with. In this case the link lantern is associated with get lantern. Get lantern points towards lantern. And here I have a name tag on the left hand side so the bar goes first we have the name of the name tag, and we have what it's associated with. It is pointing towards teapot. So get teapot is associated with teapot. Get lantern is associated with lantern. And of course we see a link to the passage next area. And we have two little sections here. Well the first thing we're doing is setting the variable lantern check to be false. The next thing we're using is a sensor macro. It's a little bit of a spoiler for a future tutorial video, but I wanted to show how name tags and hooks could be used in action here. In this case, a sensor macro works by sensing something, a click or a link or something else like that. And it works on name tags. So this macro, sensor macro click, is checking the name tag get lantern. When you use a name tag with a macro, instead of using the dollar sign, you use the question mark. So this sensor macro is sensing if a click has happened to whatever is associated with the name tag get lantern. The name tag get lantern is associated with the link lantern. So when we click on lantern because get lantern is associated with both, it does whatever's in brackets. This whole anonymous hook is run if whatever happened right here was true. If this happened, then the whatever's in brackets runs, in which case it shows the sentence you picked up the lantern, then it runs the assignment macro set to set the variable lantern check to true. And then we see in this last little section that what was happening with lantern will now get used for teapot. We set the variable teapot check to false. And then we see if the sensor macro and what and the name tag that's getting checked, teapot. We check if the link teapot was clicked. If it was, run this last little bit here. Show the sentence you picked up the teapot, then set the variable teapot check to true. Okay. So the last passage I have is next area. In next area we're combining value macro if and named hooks lantern check and teapot check. So if lantern check or teapot check is true. If either of these variables are true, do what's in these brackets here. So if either one of these is true, if lantern check is true, show a lantern. If teapot check is true, show a teapot. So as you saw in practice at the beginning of this video, when I ran this, if I clicked on lantern in the previous passage and then went to the next area, in which case lantern check was true, 
it showed I had a lantern. <clears throat> if in the previous passage I clicked on teapot, teapot check was true, and, show, and so it showed a teapot. If I clicked on both, lantern check was true and teapot check was true. And since either of them need to be true for this to happen, it showed both. Now, if I clicked on neither of them, teapot check was false and lantern check was false. And so none of this ran. And remember, too, this entire section is an anonymous hook. It's an anonymous hook containing two named hooks, lantern check and teapot check. So going back and running the story one last time, we see we have the beginning, and we have a link to the passage, A Spooky Room. We see it shows the sentence, your condition is great. We see the link to the passage, another spooky room. Our condition is good. And we see a lantern and a teapot. Now remember in the code, <clears throat> these two links are <clears throat> associated with name tags. We have a lantern and we have a teapot. So we click on lantern and we picked up the lantern. We click on teapot and we picked up the teapot. And so the name tags associated with these links were checked by the sensor macro click. Since we clicked on the links, we see the two outcomes. And we go to the next area. And since I clicked on the leak lantern, Lantern check was set to true, and since I clicked on the link teapot, teapot check was set to true. So I have a lantern and I have a teapot. So as a quick review, remember hooks are actually all of these. In most cases when you're using a macro, you're actually using a hook in, condition, in connection with it because a hook is only some selection of text. An anonymous hook is just one that doesn't have a name. It's usually when you use a macro. A named hook is one that has a name. Usually if you're checking some variable in connection with it. You can also use name tags. They either end with a bar on the right hand side or start with a bar on the left hand side and they always point towards whatever they are associated with. And to use name tags and something like a sensor macro and click here we use the question mark and then the name of the name tag. And so there you have it, a quick overview of how hooks work. In Twine 2.0, they can be rather useful. But combining name tags and checking anonymous hooks, you can dynamically change things in the text by just writing a few assignment macros or checking different things with value macros like if or else or something. You can combine them all together to produce some <clears throat> very dynamic things for your players and users to see in their stories. Thanks for watching.